Let's get started here. So welcome to today's 10 minute tour, Chicago's Uptown Theaters and the fear of being cheap. So as always, we are going to start by locating ourselves in the Chicago area. And today we are going to go about five miles north of the downtown Chicago area up to a, a neighborhood called Uptown. And we're going to land ourselves right here in front of a theater that bears this neighborhood's name. So this is the Uptown Theater. Let's get off of Google Maps and get to my camera here. This is a huge movie palace that was built in 1925. You can see there that the roof needs a tad of work, as does a lot of what's happening with this particular theater. This is considered the largest remaining movie palace in Chicago. At the time of its heyday, it set nearly 5,000 people. And if you have seen the movie Backdraft, you have seen the interior of the Uptown Theater featured quite prominently in a scene in that movie. All right, so let's move away from the Uptown right now, um, and we're gonna head down toward this intersection. But the Uptown Theater has been closed since 1981, but it is in the process of being restored to its former glory, as this Chicago Tribune article tells us, at a price tag of about $75 million. So we're coming on the corner here and looking at this white and olive green building called the Bridgeview Bank Building. So the initial section that you're looking at, the first four or five floors or so, were built in the mid-1920s, and what goes up above that comes in the late 1920s. So if you notice the unique shape of this building, it's triangular shaped, but it's rounded there at the intersection of Broadway and Lawrence Avenue where we are. And while this building did serve as a bank for many years, it now houses mostly nonprofit organizations. But I've read recently in newspapers that some of these upper levels are going to be converted into apartments soon. But of interest to us here at Chicago Movie Tours as that is that in the Bridgeview Bank building, Movies like Public Enemies, represented in the top screenshot, and TV series like FX's Fargo Season 4 have filmed inside this building. So you can see in both of these screenshots that the film and the TV series are purposely shooting from low angles here in order to capture the really pretty ceiling of this building. It's ornate, brightly colored, and um, definitely works for this like former grandeur of this banking floor. All right, so let's keep walking here a little bit further. And as we walk toward this sign that says Aragon there on your far left, let's talk a little bit about cheap theaters, what is in the title of today's 10 minute tour. So cheap theaters in cinema history are often other, otherwise called nickel theaters, nickelodeons, nickel dumps, and vicious theaters. And as their names suggest, nickel theaters or cheap theaters are cheap. The prices for them are, as you can see in this admission sign on the far right, five cents, hence the name Nickelodeon. So these cheap theaters were quite popular with immigrants and the working class, particularly here in Chicago. And for the working class, these theaters, I mean, think about it, represented a moment of pleasure away from really harsh working conditions that Chicagoans found themselves as they immigrated here in the early 1900s. Also, going inside one of these establishments would have been an opportunity for community within this group of people, engaging with others like themselves, so to speak. All right, let's keep walking toward the Aragon sign here. So, we know that the cheap theaters not only cheap, but they're also accessible. So as we cross under the CTA bridge here, let me tell you how accessible these theaters were in the early 1900s. So 1907 here in Chicago, there were 150 roughly cheap theaters. By 1908, that had doubled to 300. In Chicago, the daily attendance at these theaters, 200,000 people per day going through them giving the income to those who are uh, owners of these theaters roughly $3,000 a month, which equates to about $85,000 a month today. I'm gonna stop here for a second and just continue just speaking quickly about um, the immigrant experience and why these were so popular. Now think about it. 
Immigrants spoke little to no English when they arrived here in Chicago, and they had little money for other forms of entertainment. And think about this, you don't have to speak English to watch a silent movie like Charlie Chaplin here and understand his comedic genius. So the success then of these cheap theaters were linked to a massive influx of immigrants into Chicago. All right, let's talk about the Aragon Ballroom here for just a minute since we are standing in front of it. So this building dates back to 1926. It's uh, decorated in a Moorish style. The Chicago radio station WGN broadcast from this ballroom. And it was a ballroom up until the 1960s when regular dancing kind of stopped. And what it did after that was uh, it became a roller skating rink. It became a boxing venue. And as the pictures there on the windows suggest, also a concert venue. And uh, you might have seen, if you're from this area, uh, people perform here like Muddy Waters in the 1980s. If you were fans of the band Styx or um, REO Speedwagon, they performed here. Uh, Green Day, I believe, recorded a live album at the Aragon Ballroom as well. So let's get one more look at it, just so you can see the massive size of this place, kind of like the Uptown Theater. It, it almost takes up a, a, a significant block in uh, the Uptown area here. All right, so that's our second little pit stop today, or actually our third, since we looked at the Bridgeview building as well. Okay, let's keep walking here to our other and final stop. So back to the cheap theaters. Now, we already know that working class and immigrant Chicagoans loved these cheap theaters, but middle class and upper class Chicagoans detested them. First off, they did not like what the theaters were showing, which to them was immoral and suggestive images like robbery, murder, crime, and sex. Here's a nice little piece of public art to remind you that you are beautiful. So again, middle class not, did not care for what these movie theaters were showing. They also didn't like what they looked like inside. They were tight, they were crowded, they were dark, very dark. Uh, there's a little bitty stage there. They had some folding chairs, some of them just like kitchen chairs that people would have brought from their own homes or establishments. And there may have been a piano. But these middle class and upper class Chicagoans thought that this was a perfect place for youth to engage in making out and doing all sorts of things they shouldn't be doing without anyone seeing them. So it was a place of debauchery for these middle class and upper class Chicagoans. So with that in mind, in 1907, the, these people in Chicago who thought this way tried to regulate these cheap theaters. And Chicago, interestingly enough, is the first city to do this in the United States. So that's what these newspaper articles are telling us here. On the top left, you have um, Chicago's tracing crime to the nickel theaters. Chicago would suppress the vicious theaters. And the bottom one is a New York City or article and the subheading reads, the hold of moving picture shows on the children, results of an investigation by the Chicago City Club, is a countrywide problem. So we've even made it out to New York here with these reformers trying to regulate these theaters. So what these people did then was singling out these small movie houses, cheap movie houses, claiming that this technology lured innocent children, women, and immigrants into a life of sin. So they told about all these crimes in newspapers that were traced to nickel theaters, saying that they caused more juvenile crime than all the other bad influences put together. And these cheap theaters are contaminating the tender minds of the children. Imaginations are being debauched. All right, let's keep walking and talk a little bit more about what these folks thought. So they would also give you examples in the newspapers, right, about how these people and these kids were, were being messed up. So um, there's one story about a 15-year-old girl who allegedly ran away from home with the manager of one of these nickel theaters after visiting the theater over and over and seeing these scenes of passion unfold on the screen. There's a story of a 14-year-old boy who apparently watched way too many crime movies at one of these cheap theaters. One night he went home, got his father's gun, crept into an alleyway and pointed it at the first passerby he saw and like a movie character said to him, hands up, move or I will kill you. 
So we have all these stories here about, <laughs> about these cheap theaters, um, which of course has a, a, a bit of xenophobia associated with it as well. All right, so we're gonna turn the corner here on Sheridan Road, and we are going to head to our final stop, which is Uptown's Lakeside Theater, or formerly Lakeside Theater. Excuse me while I keep the camera down so I don't get these people's faces in the, uh, in the shot there. All right, so the Lakeside Theater, as this article shows you, opened in 1915 by the Asher Brothers Theater chain. You can see at the top there, Asher's Lakeside Theater initial opening. So this theater set about a thousand people. This was not one of the cheap theaters. It sold tickets, in fact, for around 17 cents a person, which is considerably more than what the cheap theaters now in 1915 would be selling their prices, selling their tickets as, which would be about 10 cents at this point. So in fall of 1918, this article tells us that the Asher brothers sell their theater to another chain called Lubliner and Trends. So you see there in the, the highlighted text, but it's the second part that's a little bit more interesting to us. There's reporting that it will be run as a cheap house. So what this article tells us then is that with this shift in management, so to speak, there was a lot of fear around the Uptown area that the Lakeside Theater, which had been receiving quite a bit of patronage from the elite in the north side of Chicago, would now be run as a cheap house or a cheap theater. Now, why were they concerned about this? Why did they think this theater would somehow now be cheap just because these other guys have it? Well, there's two reasons and they both come in the forms of theaters. So the Pantheon Theater here, this monstrosity had recently opened just down the street from Lakeside. This cost more than half a million dollars to build and they were charging about 22 cents per ticket to go to a show here. So it's attracting elite Chicagoans who could afford that price. It set about 3,000 people and was the largest in the area until the Uptown opened in 1925, the one that we started at. Okay, so this is one reason they're getting a little nervous. The second one is this one. This is the Riviera Theater. It opened a month after the Pantheon. Also right down the street, it attracted elite customers as well. Costs more than half a million to build and it is charging 33 cents a ticket. So the new owners then of the Lakeside Theater, that which we're coming up on now, ensured the public that no, we're not going to run this as a cheap house. We were going to continue to charge 17 cents as opposed to the rumors out there that they were going to lower their prices and lower the quality of their shows. So this is 1918 when all of this discussion is happening. By the early 1930s, actually the Lakeside Theater did serve the purpose that its new owners feared. It was eventually run as a discount or a cheap house by the 1930s. Here is a picture of the lakeside, just so you can see what it looked like as a theater. Based on the movie titles, this looks like it's from about 1959, but you can at least um, get a good idea as to what it looked like when it was a theater. So if, if that's correct, and this is 1959, actually the theater closed in the mid 1960s, so not very long after that image was taken. But you can see now that it's still in existence and it houses a youth center called Alternatives. So this uh, group or this agency empowers young Chicagoans, so like age 10 to 24, to become agents of change in their communities. And you can see that with all of the mosaic tile and words that are on here. So some of their mission statements, you might say, explore, love, strength, mentor, and you have kids playing and you have adults and um, kids communicating with each other. But as you look up the side of the building here, you can still see that the ornamentation of the theater is pretty much intact. You can tell that it was definitely um, a theater in the early silent era here. Some other words we can read, um, hope. We have renew, share, trust. And as you get here by the door, you can also look up and see where the light bulbs would have been screwed into the theater over the marquee. Um, for nighttime viewing, of course, of movies. So um, it's really neat that this has been, you know, repurposed into a, the youth center that you, you have here. There's some other words, uh, create, inspire, 
Um, and it's got this really pretty mosaic there that sort of adorns the entire front of the building. So if you're ever in the Uptown era, you should just check it out and uh, see what you can see with regard to this old theater that was feared of becoming a cheap place. And it did not when they thought it would be, but it eventually, I guess you could say, perhaps succumbed to that term. All right, so that is our 10 minute tour, Chicago's Uptown Theaters and the fear of being cheap. So I hope to see you back here again next week with another 10 minute tour. In the meantime, check out chicagomovietours.com and see what else we have coming up. Thank you and have a great afternoon.